that one ended up in a turnover. Welcome back to The Point of Attack. I'm your host, Pranav Sri Raman, and today I'm joined by my co-host, Thomas Stapleton. Thomas, how are you doing today? Doing well, man. Always a good day to talk some NBA basketball. My voice sounds a little off, but I promise you guys I'm okay. Uh, just a little voice issue, but I'm very excited to be here. Very back to be um, be back here with Pranav. Um, we've got a really exciting topic today, so I'm really excited to dive into it. Yeah, and just before we do get into it, make sure you guys enter our $100 Visa gift card giveaway. You go to mine or Thomas's Twitter, go to that pinned tweet, um, follow me, follow Thomas, follow TWSN on Twitter, and comment a basketball emoji when done. But with that being said, Thomas, let's get right into it. I'm going to ask you one simple question. Not that simple, but one question. Are the Dallas Mavericks ruining Luka Doncic's career? Whew, that is that that's it's a heavy one, but let's let's start off with the discussion with this. Who do you think is the best player Luka Doncic has played with so far in his Mavericks career? Now, granted, it it hasn't been like a super long time, but it's been five years now. We're starting to get into his uh, max contract extension. Uh, who is the best player he's played with? It's undoubtedly Jalen Brunson. That's the issue. Jalen Brunson is the best player that Luka Doncic has played with. The only like, and the only other like second notable guy that I think you can throw in this discussion was an injury riddled Chris Stapps Porzingis who could never stay healthy. And at some points legitimately looked like Ennis Cantor on the defensive end of the floor outside of the restricted area. Uh, and Jalen Brunson is now on the New York Knicks because the Mavs failed to give him a contract extension at the deadline. And then Chalker, he goes into the playoffs, has just an excellent series, gets scooped up by the Knicks, and is now averaging 21-6 and six efficiently. So, yes, I am going to I am gonna say I do think the Mavericks have wasted his career so far. Uh, Luka Doncic is one of the best, is going to go down as one of the greatest offensive basketball players in the sport. Um, just the way he is able to decipher the defense and just control tempo both as a score and a playmaker he is utterly dominant downhill his percentage like uh inside the arc is insane at the rim he's so strong he just barrels through guys his touch his footwork the three-point shooting which was bad to start off the year is now creeping uh -huh. up to 30 35 percent from three he's been on an absolute heater lately on top of that the playmaking is just generational as always like, this is one of the greatest offensive talents we've ever seen in the sport. And the best player that they've surrounded him with in the in his five, first five years in the league is Jalen Brunson, who they don't even have anymore. Yeah, so let's start off with the timeline with the Dallas Mavericks. They draft Luka Doncic in 2018. They move up to go draft him at number three. They traded away their first round pick the following year. I get it. Even though it was a protected pick. I get it. It's Luca. You do that. You get your guy. But that pick didn't really amount to anything for Atlanta, so you move on after that. And then they drafted Jalen Brunson the same year after that they drafted Luca. Since then, their drafts have been complete misses. I mean, your guy, your your guy Tyrell Terry pre-draft, um, Josh Green. Um, the list goes on. They just haven't been able to get even a reliable like wing player. Next to Luka, we're not even expecting a second star because with Luka Doncic on your roster, you're not going to be good enough to draft very highly to select that second star outside of his rookie season where they obviously didn't have the draft pick. They just haven't been able to get really like solid NBA players. And that's an issue when you're a front office. And that's part of the reason why the former GM was let go. Um, people have accused Luca of being the reason that Carlisle has been fired. People have accused Luca of being the reason that the GM was let go. People have accused Luca of being the new James Harden. But in reality, none of this is actually his fault. I mean, all these moves have had to be made when, you know, the GM isn't cutting it. The coach's philosophy is getting stale and leading to multiple first round exits. And after all, I mean, he has to be like the new James Harden in a sense where he has to shoulder all that offensive load because who else on that team is going to create offense consistently? There's no one. Jalen Brunson's gone. That, that secondary ball handler that they had last year that was so reliable next to Luka in bench units when Luka was hurt at the beginning of the Jazz series, that guy is gone. And so. 
when they're accusing Luca of being too ball dominant and playing a style of winning ba- or playing a style of basketball that's not conducive to winning, I'm like, no, obviously, like obviously, it's not an ideal style of basketball because the Mavs themselves have not surrounded Luca with the players that are capable of taking advantage of what he does on the basketball court. And that's really the problem. So yeah, I, I'm along the same lines with you here. I do believe they are wasting Luka Doncic's career. There is time for them to save save this, but like they are not aggressive players in free agency. And I mean, when you have a history of not being aggressive in free agency, I tend to believe that you're not going to be aggressive down the line. I hope that you are. I hope that you know the talent that you have in Luka Doncic, but there's no signs for me to believe that they're going to be aggressive down the line. And with Luka on the roster, you're not going to be bad enough to select very highly, but you're not going to be good enough to win a championship. And so there, it's weird that they have arguably the best player to build around in the, I'm going to say the best player to build around under the age of 25 in the NBA, but they're also bordering on that line of mediocrity because they haven't surrounded him with enough talent. Yeah. I I mean, like you said, the best player they've draft, they've drafted in the past few years has been Josh green. uh, Who's like somewhat been a contributing player this year, but that that's the problem. Guys like Josh green are relied on to play like, 20 minutes a game like that can't that's not josh green's a fine player but like guys like that are playing 20 minutes a game uh reggie bullock who was a starter for a while is averaging 27 minutes a game is built as a shooter shooting 28 percent from three dorian finney smith had a great year last year it's fallen off a cliff from three 34 percent from three um tim hardaway jr if it wasn't for the fact that he has been on an absolute heater lately his shooting would be in the gutter and he's still shooting um, th- like thirty-seven percent from the field, and pretty much all of his shots are jumpers at this point in his career. Um, so, so some of their shooters have fallen out of the rotation because they can't play defense. Um, I mean, the only like Christian Wood has been has been pretty solid, but he's just he's such food on defense. But the offense, it, but the offense is pretty good for him. I, I mean. Uh, 17 points per game, eight rebounds per game, shooting 41% from three. Like, there is some legitimate stuff on offense. And Spencer Dinwiddie also as well, 16 points per game, uh, 41% from three, just a, a really good secondary ball handler. But again, this is a team that is trying to contend. This is a team that is is looking to w- possibly uh, win a championship. Like, that is the goal. They're not trying to settle for a play-in. They're not trying to settle for a low seed. They're not trying to, you know, tank. They're trying to go as far as possible. Christian Wood and Spencer Dinwiddie as your second and third best players is not going to cut it. It's 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 just not going to. Right. Yeah. I mean, as far as the Mavs' current roster goes, I mean, you, you, it would be Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie. I think those two are the two best players aside from Luka. And let's be serious here. You're not matching up with the likes of Golden State as much as you want to. I mean, as much as Golden State has their problems, you're not better than Golden State, at least when they're like playing serious basketball. I don't believe that. You're not better than the Pelicans. You're not better than the Grizzlies. You're not better than the other teams in a weaker Western Conference in years we've seen in the past. This is supposed to be your time to capitalize on the Western Conference, and the Mavs just aren't able to do that this year because they don't have the talent to do so. And then you see the juggernaut in the East and the Boston Celtics. And granted, they've had an easier time to build their roster combined with better assets to do so. But they've also hit on late round picks that the Mavericks just haven't done in the same way. And if the map, I mean, the, the move for Kemba Walker, I think just kind of, it, it kind of showed everything I needed to know about the Dallas Mavericks. And that is that they reek of desperation. It's It's really bad. Signing a dude that has a cooked knee. I'm just going to say that's as nice as you could put it. His knee is absolutely cooked. And the GM has said that himself. It's really bad signing that guy and expecting him to come in and be a valuable contributor. Your second primary ball handler, possibly it's just not a move that a team with the real aspirations is looking to make it. It's a move that a team that's desperate for anything is attempting to make. And with Luka Doncic in this window, I just, 
like every year is a championship window with Luka Doncic and doing that. I mean, it's a move that just shows me that you're not really taking that next step as an organization. And I mean, like, yeah, even I, the Kemba quote from the other day, like, you know, what, what can you bring to this team? He was like, well, I can dribble. And you know, as, as I, as I like, as funny as that quote may sound, he's like one of like three guys on this roster who play serious minutes that can dribble like right. competently. Don, uh, Luca, Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie, and him, and, and like that's that that's that is the stuff I'm talking about. Like that, the fact you don't have you have like solid complementary role players, but none of them can actually like extend their game any further like they they all just pretty much are what they are at this point in time like none of them like and if none of them are hitting their spot up threes at a great clip which to be honest none of them really are at this point um then their value just decreases tremendously because they are out there forced floor spacing not a lot of them are out there because they can attack closeouts really well or self-create offense no they are there so they can space the floor and you know, be fillers in the offense, but if they're not hitting their threes at a high clip, then it's, I don't want to say like, what are you doing out there? But it's just like your value on the court decreases so much leading to extra attention onto Luca. Right. And another thing is, I mean, if you're not going to go after a star player and if you're like, at least go after good players and more than that, go after good players. That's actually going to maximize Luca. I mean, is the best role man that he's ever had to play with Dwight Powell? Like, are, are we serious? Am I wrong in that sense? Is is that the best role man he's? I mean, yeah, pro- or or Christian Wood right right now, but like those aren't I mean, like serious. Yeah, options. exactly. And like, get get him a Clint Capella. Like Trey Young has had Clint Capella for most of his career. Get him a. I advocated for them to trade for Rudy Gobert this offseason. Do whatever it takes, at least not even a star. Get someone that can roll to the rim, maximize Luca's ability as a pick and roll uh, ball handler, and also can defend the rim. I mean, that's what the Mavericks also really lack as well. The Christian move, uh, the Christian Wood move. I mean, I liked what it presents offensively. He's a good shooter, he does a lot of things well, he's talented. But like you said earlier, he's food on defense, and he's just not talented enough to tip the scales for this Mavs offense. I mean, yeah, this is why this is Christian Wood's third team in three years. And there's a reason for that. And a lot of it is because his fit on offense is questionable because he thinks he is a superstar in this league. He's not. And his teammates don't like him very much on the court, off the court. Um, there, there's a reason why people aren't willing to hold on to this guy as talented as he is because there are just simply issues off the court that need to be addressed. Uh, they matter. Yeah, and I think that's going to do it for this episode of The Point of Attack. Make sure you guys go follow me and Thomas on Twitter at T Stapleton NBA and at Pranav Shri Raman. Make sure to go follow at TWSN underscore 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 as well. And when you do all three of those steps, go to my pin tweet, go to Thomas's pin tweet, comment the basketball emoji, and you will be entered for a $100 Visa gift card giveaway. But until next week, guys. Peace. Get up, get up, let me begin. This is TWSN. You ain't heard about us yet, well you better know now because it's the place that it all goes down on.